Hey everyone, Zervaz here from Mod Casuals. Today I'm going to give you an ultimate hero guide for Bertrand, also known as Bertrand in French, who is one of the newest mage hero in Call of Dragons. But a lot of people have been confused as to exactly how good he is. Some people are saying he's actually not really good. Meanwhile, a lot of tests have been done with a lot of people in TFS, and we really have found how actually amazing he is and how useful he will be in war, even with or without Tohar. So in this video, I'm going to give you all of the best pairings and other heroes that he matches up well with, as well as go over his skills and a lot of the intricacy that go around him because he has a pretty unique kit, as well as some bugs that I'm going to go over what is going to happen and how you can go around them, as well as best artifacts, the best pets, and the best talent trees that you can use on him. So the first thing that I will talk about will be his skills. Now, there's a few things here to take in mind. Of course, the compound interest skill, his second ability, is a pretty unique ability because it is going to be activated by doing skill damage. But there is a lot of stuff in this game currently that is not activating it, even though it is hero skill damage. And one of these is bugged and might get fixed, and that would make Bertrand even more amazing than he is currently. So this makes him gain a stack of golden mark. He can have up to three of these stacks, and they give up to 30% hero skill damage to his casted ability. Now, the other thing to remember is that when he is casting his rage ability, he consumes all the stacks and gains another 5% damage. So this can basically give him a 45% extra damage on his ability, which is humongous and very, very amazing. But there is no hero in the game currently that allows him to get full stack except Tohar. Now, a lot of people have seen my previous videos about Tohar and it is a very sad reality. But Tohar is actually very, very bad currently in the state of the game. He is a very low tier, B tier type of hero, which is a shame. But his really only use currently is to make Bertrand have full stack. The reason that he's so bad is because all of his abilities are going to be uh, related to him channeling and for him to channel he needs to not move for five seconds and then he needs to charge with five normal attacks so in combat you never not move for five seconds otherwise you're dead so that's kind of why it happens the awakening is cancelled by moving this skill is cancelled by moving uh, so you know and the damage is cancelled by moving uh, so everything about his kid is just really bad because of movement and that is just how it is but this is not meaning that this is not good even though most Bertrand marches will actually be able to get two of these stacks consistently uh, and this is something that is still very very good because it's still a about 30% damage gain instead of a 45% damage gain and I'll give you exactly all of the combos and how to do it now the one thing that I want to mention is that this talent here thirst for blood in the skill tree is a hero skill damage factor which is meant to trigger his compound interest this was something that the developers told us previously uh, so it is considered currently a bug because it should be working and it is not. Uh, so we'll have to be waiting on when we get an update on this, if they are going to fix it or if they're going to revoke what they said and say that this is actually not supposed to work. Uh, but if this was to work, then he would not need Tohar at all because he himself would be basically giving himself two stack on his cast and then his deputy would be giving him one stack of compound interest with this on their casting skills. So uh, this would basically mean he would be at full stack pretty consistently and the way the game works currently obviously being him as a primary will mean that the deputy will cast their rage skill a few seconds later meaning that it will keep the compound interest buff on him and refresh until he then casts his rage skill uh, so it does kind of work this way and it is something that i've tested and have pretty good results with so this is going to be obviously when they do fix it but in any case you are still able to get him to get this two stacks with having a deputy that does skill damage now another thing that i want to talk about on his kit of course being that he is uh, currently the highest scaling damage factor character in the game meaning that his damage factor is 1500 when awakened which is considerably higher than any other hero who are usually at 1200 uh, so like Lilia and Villain, for example, meaning that the scaling being so much higher means that everything will hit harder and everything will just be better because uh, this is kind of how scaling works in the game. So you will see much higher number with Bertrand and the stronger your march is, the stronger your pet is, the stronger all your buffs are, the better advantages you're going to gain compared to other lower scaling heroes. Now, a lot of people have watched duels of Bertrand 1v1 versus Lilia Velen and things like that, and they assume that he is not very good because he loses most of these duels. But this is because a lot of people also ignore that this thing is a very amazing ability. So Blue Blood, his fourth passive skill, will give him basically 30% stats at all times. 
15% attack, 15% defense. Now, this is not working when you're taking normal attack damage. This means that a Marge is currently targeting you and attacking you. This should never happen. You should never be targeted by anyone in combat. So, of course, in a 1v1, you are going to. It's how 1v1 works. But in general, you're not going to be letting yourself be attacked, especially if you're flying with him because you're going to be hiding behind mountains or simply just backing off when you get targeted and come back in the fight afterwards. So this is a buff that he also is going to be gaining on a permanent basis most of the time in combat, but in most 1v1 duel, you just don't see it because they're always going to attack. So this is something to keep in mind as well. Now, before we go into the actual guide, I want to show you a few tests that Sod and Chewdog did in uh, TFS. Of course, uh, they obviously have pretty much maxed everything. They're both over 100 million power accounts, so it's uh, pretty... Uh, easy to know that they've maxed everything and as you can see Lilia is max level 5 uh, Inferno and then he's using a Bertrand villain in this case uh, he's using the visage here on this march which obviously is not optimal because this is not Tia but he's been using it with Tia which is also amazing and as you can see this pet is absolutely cracked and this is a Lilia villain max stats max research the pet is absolutely completely maxed out even though the Thunder Lizard is not a great pet compared to the Sapphire Phaedric in a 1v1, it is actually a pretty damn good pet. So um, this is obviously a matchup that you would expect that Lilia Villain would win. And in this case, it is insanely close, but Bertrand Villain did win. Uh, so this is actually amazing to see and is a very good example of how strong Bertrand can be. Now, of course, Bertrand doesn't do AoE. Meanwhile, Lilia Villain both do AoE. But in the case that we're going to be running, let's say, two Mage Marches, which is what really Bertrand excels at enabling, because previously having two March Mages was obviously doable but not as good because you'd have to use purple heroes or heroes that are not as good as Bertrand but in any case uh, it's just really interesting to see how amazingly close this duel is and I have a few more of these that basically are showing you Bertrand Tia which is Bertrand Tohar against them and you can see the Bertrand here is not maxed so obviously there's a disadvantage here uh, but the Tohar is completely maxed and this was a very very unclose fight as in it was not very close at all it was obviously much stronger on this end uh, so um it's very interesting to see these results uh, obviously these are you know tests that we did uh, amicably it's not something that will always happen in war but just a good comparison between the bertrand tia uh, and obviously having the visage which is ultimately going to be one of the best amazing items for a flying march currently uh, so this really just offers you a very good uh, perspective on how amazing it is and you can see here even he has a level five visage but it just shows you how much stronger this march is uh, than our previous flying march, which was T I T S. So as I was just saying to Bertrand, one of the reasons why he's so good at the game currently, in my opinion, is really because he enables more mage marches. In general, you're going to have a Lilia Velian, which is obviously the ultimate pairing. They have AOE and they're amazing and will still be amazing. But if you wanted to run a second mage march, you would usually do, you know, uh, wall there with Velen and then you would do uh, Lilia with Tia which is something that many people did otherwise your options are limited because Aetius or Indus are kind of like your only other real good mage option which didn't give you a lot of room now what you can do and why Bertrand is so amazing is that he is a new skill a uh, talent main mage hero which means you can pair anyone with him a second so currently of course Bertrand with Tohar a secondary is considered you know one of the uh, marches that is really good for him because Tohar enables everything on Bertrand's kit but from a lot of the tests that I've seen and we've done Bertrand Tia a secondary actually beats Bertrand Tohar in a 1v1 uh, so that's quite interesting to see uh, and it kind of like just removes the fact that even though it enables Bertrand's full kit Tohar is just so bad in the current state of the game that it is just not a, a great recommendation that I would do for anyone and if you are doing Bertrand Tia, well, not only is it good, but it also flies, which means you can go on top of mountains and rivers and attack from the side and organize a lot of PvP warfare that is more strategic than just standing there as balls than fighting. Uh, so this is, in my opinion, the best pairing for him if you want to have flying and if you have Celestials, which are obviously mandatory for this. And having a flying march it is just such a different gameplay that you are going to love it if you try it. Now, if you don't want to do Bertrand Tohar or Bertrand Tia, the other marches you can do, for example, if you don't have Celestials or if you want to have ground marches, you will then do Bertrand with Velen as secondary. And that is exceptionally powerful, as I showed earlier on the report. Uh, the reason that it's so good, not only is because Velen is amazing in general, but Velen also offers a lot of crit rate bonus. Now, crit rate has 
way more value when your scaling is high. So when you have a scaling that goes to, you know, 1500 awakened, well, having crit on that is even better. And then in the talent tree, we have, you know, more crit chance here. There's possibility of crit chance here, but there's also crit damage here, which obviously if you're getting boosted crit rate from Velen and you're getting this crit rate here, and then you're getting some from pets, and then you crit, well, your damage is about 150%. Well, this is 15% more of the damage, uh, which is substantial, of course, considering how much uh, damage he does. So Bertrand Velen will then be one of your really, really good pairs. And then you will have Lilia, who will then go with Tia. And then there will be two exceptionally strong mage pairings. And that will be really hard to beat in terms of how much merit you can do with those two marches. I would say that these are the two best marches currently for the game in terms of PvP for merit. So if you want to do two mage march, just as we said, if you are going to do Bertrand with Tia and then Lilia Velen, these are absolutely solid. This is a flying march. This is a ground march. You can do a lot with that. Now, as I said, if you want to have two ground march, you can just simply put Tia here and then put Velen here and then have two also excellent march. There's no issues with that. It's amazing. Very, very easy to do. Now, if you want to do three mage marches, well, here is what you can do. Obviously, Bertrand with Tohar is still going to be very, very decent. And then Lilia with Tia, always good, has been good for many seasons. And then you would have Waldir with Velen, which is going to be also very, very good because Waldir offers a lot of synergy with Velen and offers uh, a shield, offers skill damage and also the skill tree. So then you have three heroes with skill trees as your commanders of mage armies and you are really going to be able to do a lot of damage this march is a lot better than people think even though it has a purple hero in it uh, so this is what bertrand really does it allows you to have a lot of possibilities on the kind of marches you can do and they are all good you can fly you cannot fly you can do a lot of bursts you can do some aoe there's just so much you can do and it is just an excellent march in every single way uh, because bertrand is amazing he has a lot of damage he has a lot of buffs and he has a skill tree uh, and mages are just the best unit in the game for anyone who's not a mega whale. You should be focusing on mages. Infantry is useless if it's not T5. Cavalry is useless for almost everyone in the game currently in the meta that it is. And archers, while well, they're very good, uh, they require a lot of investment because T5 archers are just so much stronger than other ones. So unless you are a well, uh, mages should be your focus. You're going to get the most merit and the most value from all the AoE and the least amount of healing not needed to be done because you shouldn't be getting attacked because you can always back out of combat fighting at max range. Now, moving on from pairings, the talents. Now, this is quite simple, and it's very similar to my Lilia guide because it's the same. Um, in terms of mages, the skill talent tree is almost always the best. Magic tree is not bad, and on Bertrand, there is an argument to be made for the magic tree because of this talent, which when you gain a buff, you gain, you know, 2% skill damage, and this will go up to 10%, uh, which is obviously very good. 10% skill damage is great. And because Bertrand's uh, second ability is a uh, compound interest, basically is a buff, this counts, and you basically are going to be at full buff all the time. Also with Tia, with her shield and all that kind of stuff. So this is really something that's up all the time if you're using Bertrand. But here, just this tree alone is 8% hero skill damage. Uh, so this is already almost better than this tree. And then there's just the crit here and the crit damage here. So it is really, really hard to say that you shouldn't be taking the uh, skill talent tree because the skill talent tree just offers uh, so much more than anything else. There's four skill damage here. There's eight skill damage here. It's crit chance, crit damage. And then the two options here is extra damage, which is basically 120 per turn from two heroes. Or here you can get up to 8% more skill damage, which is only going to happen if you're staying in combat for a long time. So it is really, really the best option. This is kind of like the tree that almost everybody is using. So a lot of what you choose to do with your talent will depend on who you're using as a secondary hero for Bertrand. So in this case, if you're using Tia, which is going to be the flying march and the often used march for Bertrand these days, you will have a choice to make at a few spots. So in here, these two, this obviously makes your deputies rage kill do more damage. This is amazing, but Tia doesn't do damage. So you will always be picking Spirit of Rage, which is 20 extra rage per skill, uh, which is obviously the only option because the other one just doesn't work on Tia whatsoever. Now, the other option that you'll have to make is in the magic tree here, where you are going to go for the defense penetration before rage kills because this is something that doesn't work at all on Bertrand because he doesn't do additional skill damage. So this is always going to be the option here. Now, the other thing that is important here is that one point in Orb of Protection here 
is going to basically give you a chance of getting a shield. The percentage doesn't go up, only the shield factor, and you don't care about the shield factor. You just want to have a chance to gain a extra shield because if you come and look at Tia's skill right here, well, every time she gains a shield, the attack increases. This can stack three times and give up to 30% attack bonus eventually. So the more shield you can gain in combat, the better because the faster you get this buff right at the beginning of your fighting. And then when this goes away because you go off combat and you come back in, well, having shields prop from anywhere is really going to give you an advantage. So this is the extra one point that you get. And as you can see, I have one point left and this is going to be spent here. Now, as I said, these two are very valid. Uh, this is, in my opinion, really good, but you need to be able to stay in combat for a total of four rage skill turns. So meaning that both of your hero cast their rage skill four times to get 8% which is going to take sometimes over a minute of combat. Uh, this effect starts until battle ends, but battle ends quite often in PvP. So this is very, very dependent on your gameplay. If you're able to stay in combat for a long time, if you have T5, obviously this is much easier, but it really is depending on if you play in a way that you're always in combat. If you're a flying march, you're going to do a lot of poking. This becomes a lot less good. This is why this option here is very valid. And in the case that they do fix Bertrand and make it so that this triggers his compound interest, well, this is going to be a must pick. Uh, you will have to pick it. It's way too good not to. It doesn't do it currently, but it might. And if it does, this would be absolutely way better than uh, Cage Animal. You would always want to pick Thirst for Blood in that case. But again, Cage Animal is very, very valid as well. It is more damage than this, but it simply requires you to be in fight for a very long time without going out of combat. And it doesn't always work as a poking march. Apart from that, everything else is pretty standard, as all the skills here are always going to be the same for almost anyone playing mage. And here, obviously, is amazing 8 skill damage. Now, the only other difference you can do here is that if you are not going to go for the magic tree and you're going for the PvP tree, you're going to get, you know, this march speed. And then here you have the uh, rage regeneration, which you shouldn't pick because you have it here already and they're the same skill, so they don't stack, but you have more skill damage here. And then you could take the 3% extra damage here for being in combat for 30 seconds, basically. So it becomes a similar thing as to Cage Animal, because these two are obviously going to mean that you want to be in combat for a long time. So again, depending on playstyle, but as a poking flying march, I do not like it. I don't think you get the most of the bonus most of the time. So this is why I'm not picking it. And this is why I'm going into the magic tree, as well as the orb of protection, because this is still obviously thinking that Tia is your secondary hero. So this would be the tree that I would recommend if Tia is your secondary hero, as it is simply just the best option for him and for them. Now, on the other hand, if your secondary hero is Velen or Tohar, it will be quite different in this aspect. Here, obviously, you will be taking Boiling Blood, so the first uh, major talent in the skill tree. Boiling Blood makes your deputy rage kill do 8% more damage. This is miles better than the 40 rage per turn that you gain from here. Uh, because this is, you know, 8% damage on a 1200 damage factor on Velen, for example, and then he AoEs, uh, it's just way, way, way better. The value is not even close. So this is amazing. And then the other choice you have to make is up here. Uh, you can do the more hero crit damage uh, for the skills, or you can go for steady hand, which gives you basically 10% uh, hero skill damage, which is very, very decent. But the difference is that, you know, if you have Velen as secondary with crit chance, the more crit damage you have, the better. I usually tend to prefer this one because crit damage is, you know, in my opinion, very impactful. It's a lot of damage. This is still 10% damage. It happens often because he gains buff effects all the time. So this is also very, very good. They're both really good options. Now, it's hard to test exactly which one gives better results. Uh, he crits often, so he gets a lot of this damage often, but he also, you know, does damage all the time. So this is a steady percentage of damage extra. So they're both really, really good options. And in my opinion, you'll get amazing results from both of them with no questions for sure. Now, in the last skill here, AI again, is the same thing. With Velen, you do have a chance of staying in combat quite a bit longer. Uh, so this cage animal could be more worth it. Uh, but again, as I said, if they do fix Thirst for Blood and make that work for Bertrand, well, this would also be the best and there would be no questions for sure. Uh, so that would be how I would pick. But again, this is a little bit of choice that you have. So you can always do the way you want. Here, you get to choose if you want to go into the magic tree or if you want to go in the PvP tree, as I said. And this, you know, this is very good 3% damage. This is 10% defense penetration before casting a rage kill. I tend to prefer this area here because um, just simply the fact that this uh, rage regen talent is not findable anywhere else. As opposed to here, uh, you have held, head held high, which is the same as head held high here. And you can't take both. 
and this is a rage skill cast so this stacks with head held high because this is when your normal attack do damage you have a rage this is when you're casting rage skill you have a chance of gaining quite a bit of rage so this is where i tend to go also the fact that you can go for the march speed which is 15 percent as opposed to 10 percent here uh, so i personally think that the mage tree is usually a better choice uh in my opinion that is just how i think and of course here you will be taking this defense penetration Bertrand already has defense penetration in his kit. It's his third skill. Uh, adding to that makes it so that when he casts his high scaling 1500 damage skill factor, less defense means he's going to hit for much harder. And then if he crits on top of that, I've seen some Bertrand do insane crit uh, on enemy marches. So in my opinion, this is a more fun, more balanced way to do it. Going here, 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 and then going to Army of Valor in the PvP tree also is very decent, but I don't think the 3% damage over 30 seconds Again, you have to be in combat for 30 seconds all the time, and it's not how PvP works. You're doing a lot of in and out, in and out. So I just don't think you get the full value out of Army of Valor as opposed to Magic Maelstrom, which is always going to work on your rage skills. So that about covers it for the talents. As always, skill is just king in terms of skill damage heroes like Bertrand, like Lilia, and like Velen. Now moving on to artifacts. Well, this is a pretty standard thing. I'm using Phoenix Eye because I have it at level 5 and it's amazing. I think for the gameplay of Bertrand Tia or Bertrand Villain, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're always going to be a good option. I say that in a case of a flying march so with Tia, you are going to be able to come in, poke, cast your Phoenix Eye on 5 target, do huge damage and then back out. This has a lot of value and it is going to be one of the best options for him. Now obviously the Mirage Orb, which is kind of like lore-wise made, for Bertrand is also going to be amazing. The difference between the two is very, very small in my opinion. This does, you know, 1500 damage to one target and then a thousand to two others, and then it goes up multiple thousands if you have it at level five. Uh, and then it's basically a very, very decent AoE. It hits only three targets, uh, I believe. Yeah, two more enemies. So three targets total instead of five for the Phoenix Eye, for example, or four at level four and lower. But in any case, they're very close. They both do very decent AoE damage. Now, the difference is that Mirage Orb also knocks the enemy up in the air, which is kind of considered a stun and is considered something that, you know, is have CC open field will really help other enemies catch up or other allies catch up to them, block them. There's a lot of things you can do with having a stun slow, like knock up kind of thing. Uh, so this is very, very, very good uh, effect for a lot of poking and stuff. And then the additional effect here being that when you gain a buff through a hero's skill, they will deal 30% more damage up to 21. So three buffs will make it go to max. And this is kind of always going to happen. If you have Tia, there's a buff. Uh, if you compound interest, is a buff. Uh, he's getting buffs all the time uh, through skills. There's many things that happen depending on the march. Uh, it is just so like this is going to be something not really hard to maintain and to use at maximum efficiency. So really it really doesn't matter which ones you're using they're both really really good options now the only one i wouldn't recommend is infernal flame because unless you have lilia in your march you're not getting this whole scorch effect so it's more of a lilia kind of artifact but if you're using bertrand lilia or lilia bertrand it's still going to be a very decent option and as always the purple option magic bomb is really the best option for any mage heroes it is everything you need it's damage it's good stats and it is the best purple artifact in terms of magic heroes so if you don't have any of the legendary ones this is going to be your choice you could also argue that uh, the breath of dragantis is good now a uh, defense break is obviously very good but this offers nothing else than a defense break and it is something that you can cast with an off march you don't need your main damage march to be the one casting this for the defense uh, break to work so this is something i wouldn't recommend on your main damage he dealing hero but it is still something viable now lastly the Visage of the Sanctus. Now, this is obviously only working if you have Flying March, Tia, and Celestials. But if you do, I think this is the best artifact for this march by far. Uh, this gains a lot of shields, and it is going to make you last in combat very, very long. This is one of the bonuses of having Tia. As much as there's less damage because Tia is not a damage dealer, the fact that all the counter-attack damage you're doing is going to be absorbed by the shield, means your march is going to be on the field much longer without having to refresh, your stamina is going to go further for you, and your troops are not going to die as much, so you can just do a lot more damage, and you're going to see battle reports from flying marches uh, just way, way better than uh, you would expect, because they just can keep poking and poking, and if you don't get targeted, if you play smart, you will be able to do that for a long time. This just makes it even better, because you gain even more shields, which means that you're going to be an insanely tanky flying march 
but also this makes it so that every time you gain a shield you are going to gain a mark of judgment and then every time you cast a rage skill you're going to consume these marks for 250 at level 1 and then take 500 at level 5 meaning that a 500 damage factor every time uh, let's say you are going to consume a shield and then if you think about it well we already said that there's a talent here that grants you a shield so this is a chance of gaining a shield every time there's a rage kill there's two per turn so shields are coming up here and then tia herself has you know her shield if tia is awakened she even shields nearby friendly legion so that's even more shields being done uh, so it's starting to be a lot of shields and then even better than that if you go here in the talents and you look at heart wall for your pet well, this is another chance for your legion to gain a shield. So you are going to be gaining a lot of shields if you build your march properly. And this will consume itself for like hundreds of not thousands of damage on your rage skills on top of the actual rage skill. So this is a really, really decent. For example, uh, if you think about Infernal Flame, this does uh, at level 2, it does 1350 uh, three times. So it's like a... 4,000 damage-ish, let's say, uh, over the duration. Like, let's say I do 4,000 magic skill damage total in at my level currently. Well, if you compare it to the Visage of the Sanctus, uh, let's say it was at level 2. I think it's like at 300 damage at level 2. Well, 300 damage, let's say you get 3 shields every turn, basically. You're consuming it for 900 damage every rage kill. There's no cooldown on this. This is permanent. There is no cooldown on this. The cooldown, this basically just gets you 3 more shields, which will make it hit three more times which is even better uh so you're basically every rage kill you're adding an extra 600 to maybe even a 1200 damage every time you consume a rage kill because you're going to be casting two to four shields almost every turn uh so you're going to be doing basically the damage of infernal flame uh within three turns you'll have done the full damage but then you have many many more turns because there's no cooldown while infernal flame has a cooldown of one minute and 30 uh, so Vision of the Sanctus is just amazing, amazing, amazing artifact. Obviously, it just requires you to have a Flying March to use it properly. Now, moving on to the pets. Uh, obviously, it's quite straightforward here too. The Shadow Frederick is the pet that is made for Bertrand. It boosts the damage uh, that the March does to a single target. So mine is at 3.65% and this pet's level 28. So this is pretty decent and then there's a dev damage of 78 on its own so this is a very very powerful pet for a single target because you're inflicting more damage to that one target which is what bertrand does as we talked about his scaling 1500 higher than other heroes so this does more bonus it offers more of a bonus than it would for lydia for example uh, so it's just a very very good ability and it is really really made for him as a single target but in terms of theory crafting, when you look at the damage that this does and then this adds, it is still lower than what a Sapphire Faderic does. 147 damage at my current level. Uh, it is only a one star. And this is going to afflict two legions. You know, I have one legion surrounding it. Then if you add, uh, for example, you know, these uh, fancy skills here, uh, like Split Plane Boom, for example, which I have one here. If I go and check it out, let's just own only. So Split Plane Bloom obviously will make it so you can hit multiple other legions, which is going to cause that 150-ish damage to hit, you know, let's say you're hitting four targets total. Well, this is 600 damage. If you're looking at the Shadow Hunter, well, the 3% is only going to be on one target. So it has a cap. Uh, meanwhile, this, you know, is really AoE. So the Sapphire Faderic in general is a pet that's considered to do way more damage than the Shadow Drake. Uh, but on a single target, the Shadow is ultimately a little bit better and obviously if you have a two star it will get better and better because the percentage will get higher so this is really how many targets you're hitting uh, it will depend but both are going to be amazing options now one thing to know about the shadow hunter is that this is going to be very important to have the three star enduring shadow hunter skill because it makes the effect of the captive last longer which means that the problem when you're using like this pet for example is that it casts its captive and it lasts for two seconds so the pet usually casts a few turns after the main hero. If the main hero then casts his rage kill a few seconds later, well, usually this will have gone away because uh, the two seconds is very, very, very short. So by the time Bertrand casts his spell, Deputy casts his spell, then the pet casts his spell, then there's a few seconds and then Bertrand casts his spell again. Well, usually that's not two seconds. Usually you need maybe like three or four seconds. So this is where having the three star skill for the Shadow Hunter makes it really really good because otherwise you're not gaining the percentage bonus on him uh, without it so 
it really is a pet that is going to perform very well, but it will need many different things for it to really work well. As opposed to a Sapphire Federic, we can just use any time and it will just be amazing at all points. So this is a decision, obviously, that you have to make. It depends on the level of spending of your account and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it is uh, something that is a lot harder to pull off properly when the Shadow Hunter is depending on so many things. Uh, so, you know, for many people, using Sapphire will also work just fine. Uh, so, you know, really is uh, up to you the way you want to do it, and it will all work no matter what. So that wraps it up for my Bertrand Hero Guide. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to share in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any questions and share theory crafting and anything else you want to talk about Bertrand. Now, don't trust other people who say he is bad because he is definitely not bad. He is definitely worth the investment. Mages are just the best unit in the game for anything, including merit, including power for your alliance and your wars as they are max range and they are usually a lot harder to take down if you are playing smartly and obviously most people are just using bottles of mages because calves are completely useless in 95% of pvp situations as they approach a ball they just get insta melted and even the flying march bertrand tia is trading quite well with the flying uh calf that we are usually seeing which is usually for Rondil, tia something like that uh, so this is a very very powerful march it will rule the sky Having a few of these in a ball, for example, 10 flying Bertrand uh, Tia Celestials will basically melt any cow trying to go and attack them. They will melt any infantry on the ground. They can attack from the back line, they can attack from the side and kill all the DPS. And then when they get attacked back, they just back off on the mountain. And then the other enemies are like patting like randomly trying to get to them, messing up their patting. You have to really pay attention. So it is an absolutely amazing uh, hero and he will be an absolutely amazing flying march or just ground march with Velian with Lilia, with Walder, whatever you want to put, he will just work well with anything because he is just that good and has a lot of raw damage, raw stats, a lot of buffs, a lot of stuff. Like, everything here is good. Defense penetration is also really, really good. Uh, so, this is a hero that will shine. And in this game, any mage marches you can bring is going to be valuable more than any other march, except marksmen who may be maxed out are going to be obviously very, very good as well. But even a maxed out infantry will not bring you as much value as a maxed out Bertrand. And obviously, calves are not even anywhere close to mages in terms of value. So I would really recommend to anyone uh, that wants to play mages to invest in Bertrand. You don't even need him to be maxed to have the full value. I would just recommend... Obviously, the, four, the third skill is, in my opinion, the second best. This is the most important. This is the second most important. And this is the third most important. As the hero is currently, if, if they fix Thirst for Blood... He will then become even more of a powerhouse and obviously his second skill will become the best skill that he can have so i would do five five and then one one and then just you know play with him uh, upgrade him more you don't have to awaken him to be amazing uh five five one one will do well if they fix the talent if they don't just do what i did five one 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 and just kind of like randomly upgrade and see what you get it's up to you of course but he there's never a situation where he's gonna be a bad hero in my opinion thank you guys for watching i'll see you on my next video